All right, everybody. Well, welcome to the Orange Press Little League uh, scorekeeper training. I want to thank all of you for volunteering to help out with the league. Um, you are an integral part of our operations, and um, without you guys, the games just don't happen. Um, we can't start without scorekeepers, and um, you are part of what is the most popular question that is always asked at the game, which is, what's the score? <laughs> um, so usually I would always tell the players asking or whoever it's zero zero. And after about the third or fourth time that you tell them it's zero zero, they, um, they eventually just stop asking you, but usually you can point them to the game changer app and, um, they're able to, to look at it that way. Um, so I want to thank you. We're all excited about getting back to the field again. And, um, if you ever run into a situation where you don't know something with scorekeeping, all the resources that I'm going to share with you are on the OCLL website under uh, volunteer resources. So you can look there and um, all of that information will be there. It says spring 2020, but I'll, um, I'll update it right after our meeting here to be 2021. Um, the only interesting rule change to note for you guys that might get brought up is because it's very different than anything that's happened is this year because Little League wanted to get players on the field. Um, they are allowing teams to compete with only eight players. Now that normally is if you were below nine, you can't you can't start a game. But now they are allowing you for this season and this season only that if, if they have eight players, they can play the game. Um, if they get below that, obviously, then that that's a problem, but they can play with eight players. So if you get asked that by the umpire or anybody, that's um, something to think about. And just, yes, it is. And again, all the BODs are always there. They'll be able to help you and they are familiar with the rules. So I'm going to um, share my screen here. And this is the uh, scorekeeper overview that I mentioned that is on the OCLL website. And um, again, I'm, I'll update this to 2021 after we're done here. Um, there are two quick instances where um, you as a scorekeeper, where I, I want you guys to speak up if something is going on. And there are a couple different instances that are there. So, um, you know, you can ask the umpire, if you get confused about what the count is, definitely, hey, Blue, what's, what's the count? Um, there are some instances where you may not be sure if that run counted that, that came across the plate. Um, he, he'll usually point to the plate to indicate that that run counts, but sometimes if the, the managers are contesting whether that run counted, um, feel free to ask him at the end, did that, that last run count? Um, that way you can make sure you're accurately reflecting the score and it isn't the sixth inning and they go, wait a second, I thought I had 10 runs and you only show me his nine. Um, so feel free to ask them that and they'll, they'll provide you with that clarification. Um, the other instances are if a pitcher has exceeded their maximum pitch count and all of your, your managers should know what these are. Um, a lot of you are going to be dealing in these lower divisions here, the, you know, 12 and below. Um, if they start a batter and so say we have a 12 year old and he's at 83 pitches and he's allowed to finish that batter. Um, but once he's done with that batter, you need to let the blue know, Hey, he's, he's past his pitch limit. Um, it's just for player safety, but um, they can't go over that. The Little League rule is they can't go over that limit. They can finish that batter, but they can't go over that. Um, so once they've done that, just let the blue know, and then he'll, he'll alert the manager to that as well. And hopefully managers, especially these, a lot of these players haven't been playing in a year. Um, hopefully they're being mindful of that and not going to 85, but, um, or 75 or 50 in these other divisions, um, but you never know. There's some very interesting catcher to pitcher changes in those rules. Um, your, your manager will be aware of all of these um, and they may ask you, okay, what was his pitch count? Um, and just as you're keeping track of the pitch count for your pitchers as they're there, just be mindful of the innings that, that they came in and then you'll be able to answer any questions in terms of that um, because it's, a lot of our catchers like to be pitchers as well, and they like to be those versatile players. So they'll those could come up in different instances. Okay. So back to here and um, Game Changer. There's additional training links here from Game Changer themselves. There's also a video on the OCLO website. Um, you'd have to listen to me drone on again. Um, I don't know that you want to torture yourself quite that much, but um, that might be something you want to do there. 
Um, I'm going to quickly uh, stop sharing this. And what I will do is I'm going to go through. Uh, I'm actually going to share Game Changer on here. And let's see if we can get her rolling. And so. And when you pick up the iPad, um, it should look just like this with this young man who is throwing a pitch here. And um, first thing you're going to need to do is sign in to Game Changer. And um, there are three administrators that can sign in for your games. And it's the league, your manager. And then what I advocate for our managers to do is normally set up a generic account. Uh, you set up, you know, OCLL Bear Cubs and OCLL, you know, AAA Dodgers, whatever it is. And that way, if there are multiple scorekeepers, which we have from time to time, um, you, you can then, um, you know, ha all have the same login information. You don't have to bug the manager while they're getting uh, set up for the game because they're usually concentrated on getting those players loose in that. So once you're ready, just tap that big uh, sign in button there. And I will. One second, let me stop that screen share so we're not sharing passwords here while we sign in. So give me a second and I will sign in here. So once you're logged in, it should have, so this is my 2020 majors team here and you see our first games this Friday. And normally when you're ready to score, you just tap on where it says OCLL majors athletics at majors angels and it'll bring up the game. And then when you're ready to score it, just click uh, tap that score game. I'm not going to do that at the moment here. I'm going to go back to one of our previous seasons and games just so that way we can um, play with that. But I don't want to score a game that hasn't been played yet. So we'll go back to last season and we'll go to this last game that was here. And I'm just going to keep scoring that game. And so sometimes you'll see this where you're getting, um, it's pulling in data and information there. Um, but it'll. This is what the screen will look like once you have everything logged in and it's it's properly connected and it has all the information. So, for argument's sake, let's say we couldn't end in a in a tied game here. We had to go extra innings for whatever reason. It was playoffs or whatever. So the uh, the visiting team was the Athletics in this instance, and you can see that there are players in the field here for. Some of the lower divisions, you don't necessarily need to worry about keeping track of, you know, yes, Dylan Pradia was at first and Austin Jones was at uh, second. In the uh, upper divisions, as players get substituted in and out, it is important to track if there is any movement between those players um, or uh, where they are in the field, especially for some of the, you know, the pitcher catcher relationships that you'll see there. Okay. And if you need to substitute it out, you just tap on that player. And then it'll give you a list of who is there. And you can just tap it out. We'll say Liam got into the game. And it's going to ask you there. Liam Striggs is batting number six, first for uh, Dylan Fanger, number five. And then you say, yes, that's correct. So it automatically changed that batting lineup for you for them. So when their turn comes up to bat, that batting lineup got adjusted. OK, and you can do that for any of them there. And so if, if you're ready to go ahead, the big uh, pitch button that's there in the middle, you uh, click on that. And as you go through, you can just tap all, you know, called strike, and it records all of that. And now Letty, if you were just joining us, asked us something really critical early on is if you make a mistake, how do, how do you go back and undo that? It's your, your friend is the undo button here. The only thing is, is if you make multiple mistakes, like let's say I, I double tapped it really quickly and there were three or four, you have to do it for each time that it's out. Um, it, they don't let you go back and do entire inning corrections. Just um, they're, I think they're fearful about, you know, major mistakes as you go through with any of that. So we'll say we got a called strike here and then we had a swing and a miss. And then let's say he hit a ball in play and Documenting whether it was a line drive, a, a pop up, a bunt, um, obviously a bunt's a bunt, um, hard ground ball versus ground ball. Those are all judgment calls on your end. And um, in the end, documenting what the play actually was that occurred is the primary thing that's there. 
And usually when I'm scoring on Game Changer, I'll keep track of what's going on in the field. And then I quickly document it once play is stopped and the blue is called time. And so we'll say that uh, RJ hit a hard ground ball and he got a single. Now it's gonna bring up this right here where they're asking you, well, where, where did the ball get fielded at? And we'll say he had a single to right field. And you just tap on, I tapped on Liam and that's, uh, you know, so when it's documented, it'll say he had a hard ground ball to right field and he's safe at first. So in this instance, we have another batter that's up and we can, you know, let's say Jason got a ball on his first call there. Now, let's say in that instance, Kabarski stole second. So what you do is you press and hold on the player, press and hold, and you drag him over to second base. Now, if he was safe on that, obviously he's safe. And you can either stole base, defensive indifference, wild pitch, pass ball. Again, um, upper divisions, they might be worried about if it was a stolen base versus defensive indifference. Um, a pass ball, obviously the pitcher doesn't want a, field, a wild pitch on their record. It's more important to document that this player safely made it there. So if you want to just give them the stolen base, that's, that's fine. Um, it is your call in terms of, of how you're documenting that because you're the scorekeeper. Okay. Now let's say that um, RJ got picked off a second for whatever reason. And so then say he's out and you can say he got picked off offensive interference or he was out on an appeal. The other manager could have done that and he was out on an appeal. Or we could just say other and we can document maybe a defensive play. Maybe they back picked him second base or something like that. Okay. Again, the undo button is down here for you, so we can undo that. And now RJ isn't out anymore. He's safe. The, the undo button's there at the bottom for any of those defensive plays that are in the field. And if you're doing it for pitch count, it's right there when you select the, the big pitch button that's there. Okay. For the lower divisions, this is minor, so AAA all the way down to farm. There is the five run uh, any or five run per rule limit. And so once you get to five runs, that's it, innings over. And so we're not going to get to five runs here. I don't want to keep you guys here for all of that. Um, so once you're done with an inning, and so let's say we got to five runs here, we needed to switch sides. If we tap on the menu button there, we can, uh, you'll see it brings up all of those options and then just select end half inning. And it's going to tell you, hey, you guess here's what your summary is. Do you want to accept all of this and switch? And this would be your chance if you wanted to go back and make any corrections there. And you can obviously still go back. You can use that undo button. But So we're going to accept and switch this. And then we see that um, everybody's changed. Now the athletics are in the field. And if you tap the um, tap at the very bottom there, you'll see it says on the bottom left, it says athletics, nationals, plays, stats. So we want to get over to the Nationals lineup, and you can see that it has Carrillo batting um, in that six slot there. And again, you would do the same thing here, you know, either balls or called strikes as you go through with any of that, okay? For lower divisions, you're going to have a continuous lineup, which means if you have all 12 of those players show up that day, it'll be one through 12. You don't have to worry about subbing players in or out there. When you get up to the majors division, that is a substitute there. So they have um, the, in the majors division, only the nine starters bat. So the nine players that you see here on the field, those are the nine that are batting. And the other three players get subbed into the game. And there are minimum play rules that the managers have to worry about. Um, but that, that's not something that you have to worry about as a scorekeeper. The one thing you do is you have to document it as it happens. So let's say that the manager walked up to you and say, I'm, I'm subbing out Carrillo. So there's those three little lines that's next to third base on Carrillo's uh, line there. If you tap on that, it will bring up uh, what you need to do. It'll bring up options for you here. And so if you want to sub out of the lineup, and then it tells you what players are on the bench for you. And we'll just put Dylan in there, and it's there. 
Now they need to tell you when they sub those players back in because the minimum play rule is they have to have six outs and one at bat for majors. Um, they'll come back and they'll tell you and the other scorekeeper, hey, I'm subbing back in Fangler for um, Carrillo. And then you would just come back to those, the tap on that, sub him back out of lineup, and then sub Carrillo back in for it. Okay. The one thing to keep in mind with all of this um, is... So with Game Changer, you guys are the game clock. The home team does Game Changer. And if you look right next to the white bar on the left-hand side there, there's a clock that says 150.42. Well, we didn't start the game clock, but um, we can start it now. I'll just start it for argument's sake here. Um, when the blue turns to you and he says, start the game clock, that's where you start that game clock on there. Your phones are not the, the accurate thing. Your manager's phones are not the accurate of the game time. Neither is the blues. When there is any question about what game time is left or what is there, they're going to come and they're going to look at the Game Changer app and they're going to see where, where it is. And if there's still two minutes left in the game, they can, they can still play that game, especially in the upper divisions where um, for AAA and all of those, the last inning is unlimited in majors. Every single inning is, is unlimited runs. So if there's four minutes in a game, that team still has an opportunity to get, they could get eight, nine runs and come back and win the game. Anything's possible. So um, it's key that you make sure that you get that clock started when um, when you the blue tells you. It's not when you're there, it's not there, ask the blue, you want me to start the clock? That's another instance where you would ask him and, and he'll tell you. Some of them want to start it right after the plate meeting with the managers. Some of them want to start it when right after the first pitch or right before the first pitch. They're all um, unique in when they want to start things. So um, just just ask him if he doesn't tell you anything and first pitch gets delivered, I would start the clock and, and start it at that point there. For our lower divisions where we have um, extra outfielders, we have that fourth outfielder in the farm. So what uh, should have said that before I went there. So tap on the menu button at the top there and go to settings. And then right there, you want to select Rover. And that'll just put another fielder out into the field. So that way, if you want to select and put whoever that fielder is out there, you can go ahead and put that extra fielder out there. OK? Normally, it'll be, um, it will be active for the lower divisions. Um, and then you'll see if, if you're in a, a majors or another a team, it, will, um, it won't be there. The other thing under those settings to keep in mind is uh, the game clock is here in those settings. And if it's disabled, it won't be there in the bottom. You see it just went away. So if you log into an iPad and you don't see the clock in there, go up to the menu here. And then we go to settings and go all the way down. And then you want to do a count up timer. And that way it'll keep counting up because they'll come to you and if it gets to 145, then for or for majors it's 145 and then the, the time varies for other thing other divisions um but if you do a countdown it can get a little bit more complicated as they start to get into negative time so we usually advocate everybody do a count up timer that is um it for actually working with the ipad and scoring a game um, are there any questions about working the ipad or any unique things All right, that sounds good. Um, so once you're done with the game here, you want to tap on the menu and you want to select game over. And they'll give you options in terms of who blew the save or all of that. Again, the, the, I don't really want, we're here about supporting our kids and being positive with them. I don't think we want to say, you know, Stephen Ashby blew a save. Um, not because I'm self-conscious about that, but it's, <laughs> We want to be positive with our players, and I don't know that we need to associate that with them. So we'll just skip and finalize that. Uh, we don't have to do starting pitchers or anything there. One thing before you exit that um, will be helpful as you document things for it is, and I'm going to go back and resume scoring for a reason, pitch count. Um, 
all of you are required to fill out a pitch log for the pitching divisions. There is not a minimum age to do uh, scorekeeping, Jamie. Um, they just have to be able to keep up with the game and know the rules of the game as we go through. A good question. So all of you are required to keep a pitch log, and it has to be filled out in paper. And um, part of it is you need the pitch counts for each individual players. I will show you my book here in a little detail once I stop sharing my screen. Um, but the easy thing for you to do is if you tap on the pitcher, so if I tap on Dennis Michon, you can view pitch counts, and it will give you the pitch counts for all of the pitchers for the game. And that really is helpful if you are trying with the other scorekeeper. Well, I have 20, you have 21. Normally, you're going to be more accurate with Game Changer um, for those pitch counts. Plus, it's easier than counting. If you look at the paper scorebook, you have, you know, a lot of circles you have to count up on this side. So it's usually easier for you to um, go ahead and come through and uh, use that in Game Changer. So that's a little shortcut to help you guys as you um, are finalizing the game and working with that other scorekeeper. And even though the other person's on the other team, you know, it's it's A's and Angels tomorrow evening, but our scorekeepers are you work collaboratively with that person. You know, you're obviously you're going to cheer on your players and you both want your team to win, but help each other out if you don't know what's going on or you missed what the play was work collaboratively with your your colleague there um, it's important that both of you are working together so that's a little trick to help you guys um, at the end of the game as you're going through that so again once you're done just tap menu and then game over we'll just skip and finalize we don't need to worry about that and then at this point we're done right we exit the game and it's over with once you get to this screen, you're done. You, you've done everything there. You've, you've finalized it. You've gotten all of that. Um, you can generate a box score if you want to, if, if you had a question about some of the final stats there. The other thing that you could do that's helpful there is again, down here, it will give you the pitch count. So you see pitch and strikes. So Ivan Ayala had 77 pitches and 39 of them were strikes. So that's another place where you can go to look for that pitch count as you're going through. So on the top left here, you wanna X out of that to close it. And then the one thing we remind everybody to do is click on the, um, the three lines at the top here. And you wanna make sure that you go to your account and sign out of it. Um, oftentimes people will be in a rush to get going and, and get out of there. Um, make sure you sign out of your, um, your game changer session. I don't, you know, the, some of the games are back to back. I Really couldn't see another parent messing with the score on the on the other team, but just sign out. It makes it easier on them when they're trying to log in for their game and that. Okay. Any uh, game changer questions? Uh, Steven, not on game changer, but more for the pitch count. Where, uh, just to clarify, we only do pitch count for our pitchers, or do we do pitch counts for both players? You're do if if you're the paper book and for game changer. Game changer automatically will keep a pitch log for both players. And if you're doing the paper, you do it for both players as well. That way, if there's ever a conflict, you can say, I have 51, or I have 52 pitches, and then you guys need to go through and, and kind of try to reconcile that. So you have to keep it for both of them. Okay, so then on our um, game pitch log, we still, well, not the log, the other one where we need the uh, signature, we still need the signature for um, the manager from the both teams, right? Correct, and, and perfect segue into what we were, I was gonna go over the book, uh, next there. So I'll stop sharing that screen for a second. And um, so I at, I set up for all of my um, my teams, I have a, a book for my scorekeepers and I hand, this is in my cart every game. I just tell them this is here and, you know, go grab the book and they know everything they need for a game is in here. I keep a lineup in here for them. And then I have a couple other informational things, including um, this is the pitch log that you guys have to keep. And I was prepping it for this season and I haven't destroyed the one from last season. So this is the pitch log that um, Letty was talking about. You can go this way with it, okay? And you see, you need to keep in um, the amount of pitches that are there, the player's name, and it needs to be signed by you as the scorekeeper. The umpire also should sign this. So make sure they do not leave after they finish the game. And then it needs to be signed by both managers. So you have to take this to the opposing manager and get him to sign your pitch log. And you have to take it to your coach and get him to sign it. 
the big thing is, is that that needs to be in ink. Um, it cannot be in pencil. And I see that some of my scorekeepers did pencil, so we're gonna have to talk to them about that. Um, but it needs to be in ink, that way it can't be changed. What if uh, you don't get the umpire's signature? You can get the BOD to sign it. If um, the umpire take, I know sometimes they'll take off after games and you can't track them down. The BOD on duty, the board member on duty, the BOD can sign the logbook for you. And they can also sign the, um, they need to sign the paper scorebook. So when they sign the paper scorebook, they can, um, the BOD can do that for you as well. Steven, I don't know if you can see your chat, but there are a couple questions in the chat. Okay, uh, I saw the one from there. In single A, how do we log the pitch count for kids? So when the coach is pitching, um, you do not document those as pitches for whoever the player is. Um, so that's why it's important that you have that paper log book there, right? So you wouldn't document any balls or strikes for them. Hopefully your coach is throwing strikes and they're, they're getting the kid onto base, which is what we're trying to get that game action in there. Um, so you wouldn't document any balls or strikes, but when they either were out because they've exceeded the, the pitches or they're out because they hit it to second and they were thrown out at first, whatever the resulting play is, that's what you would document. You wouldn't document those pitches for the individual um, when your coach is throwing. But a, a good question, Veronica. And thank you, Leslie, for pointing that out. Can you show, is it easy enough to show on Game Changer how you would record the play without recording the actual pitch happening? Sure, yeah, let me, uh, let me see if I logged out of that one. I did not yet, all right. Let me get this shared real quick. Sorry about that, clicked stop too soon. Okay, so we'll go back to Game Changer and we'll go back to this, uh, this game right here. And we're gonna keep scoring it. And so in this instance, you would just say ball in play, ground ball, and we could say single through Clayton, okay? And it, you see that it added one to his pitch count that was there. So when you get in for the single A division, when you're doing that coach pitch, when it's the four balls and they call the coach out to, to pitch to them, that's when you would not document that fourth ball. You would just leave it at three balls, two strikes, and then the resulting pitch is whatever whatever game action generates. Either they're they're struck out or they get out as a result of whatever the play is you would go ahead and you would document it that way. So you just don't record the last pitch before the coach comes out. And then I it might understand that the coach only throws one pitch afterwards. Uh, I would have to look at our ground rules that we were revised. I know that we went through different versions when we were looking at that. Um, but I, I will get back to you on that, Justin. I thought they had three pitches to get them in out, but I, I don't want to be 100% certain. I'm not 100% certain on that. So we'll yeah, I'm still just not clear on how you record the action after they pull the pitcher and the coach throws a pitch. You can you can record, let's say a base hit without recording a pitch. So you just don't record that last pitch. So say they get they throw four pitches and all four of them are balls. The last ball that's thrown, you don't record that. So they'll be at three. When you say you don't record it, don't click the word pitch. So no, you so you're in pitch right here, right? And we say right. ball, ball, ball. Coach is coming out to pitch. Fourth ball was just pitched. I don't record anything until either the player is is out because coach struck him out or because there was a ball in play. So now I would document, let's say this player, you know, ball in play. We're gonna say ground ball and he's out. He's out at first. And we'll say that's the double play. And so that actually records that action as the fourth pitch? Correct, it recorded that as the fourth pitch for him, yep. So you're still documenting that he threw a, a, a fourth ball and then 
after you're documenting the action after that because we're trying to get that game action in there for those single a players okay so you would you would really only record the you wouldn't record the fourth pitch from the player and then you would only record the final pitch from the coach and whatever that result was correct whether it's one two whether it's one pitch two pitch three pitches you only record the final pitch and the result correct yep okay. and uh i here we have a guest that can help us alex cantola is one of our board members and a single a manager so alex how many pitches do they get um to come out so it depends on how many strikes they have so if it's four straight balls then the the coach will come out and pitch like how many strikes so they would get strike one strike two and then on the third strike they would be out um if it was a full count three balls and two strikes then the, the manager will come out or the coach and just pitch one, one pitch to the batter. And if it's a foul ball, then they just keep going until they either strike out or get a base hit. Yeah, still super confused on what to actually record though once the... So I think like in the book, you would just record if, if the pitcher is actually still pitching with the strikes. So if if the the kid pitch throws four straight balls then the the coach will come out and pitch one pitch if the kid swings and miss or fouls it off then it'll be strike one and then if the uh, coach pitches a second pitch and the kid swings and miss then it's strike two but um, you don't record those in game changer oh I, I i would i would mark yeah it goes it goes well but you're keeping track of, of what's going on. The umpire needs to keep track. So if the umpire loses counts, then it's go he's going to go back to um, the, the head scorekeeper, whoever has the book or whoever has the iPad. So someone else needs to keep track of how many pitches there are, how many strikes. Well, you don't record that in, in Game Changer because it goes against the player and you don't want to add, you're not adding pitches to single A player. So if, can, I, can I try explaining it to Justin because I was stuck like he was. So sure. Justin, I'm just going to use your son as an example. Okay, so let's say your son is up to bat. Um, the kid pitches him one strike, so you mark it one strike. The kid pitches uh, the pitcher pitches him another strike. That's two strikes that you're marking on Game Changer. The pitcher pitches him another strike. That's three strikes, so your son is out. Okay. Well, now let's say your son's batting and the pitcher pitches him a ball. So it's one ball. Let's say he gets up to three balls, okay? So on Game Changer, you have three balls on there. Well, let's say he pitches him another ball. You can't mark that because then he would, he would walk. So right now your son only has three balls marked on Game Changer, so the coach comes in to pitch. So let's say the coach pitches and um, your son hits the ball on the first pitch. Then if that's a single, then you're going to mark on game changer, hit, ground ball, single, first base, wherever he gets. Does that kind of make sense? Yes. And then that records that pitch for the player that was removed for the coach to Correct. pitch. Well, it'll go towards that, but on also on the, um, the book, there's a way that we put where the where the coach comes in to pitch so it shows it on the book as well if that makes sense okay i it, it's starting to i just think it's going to take once or twice to figure it out thank you and also then let's say your son has um uh, it's a full count two two strikes and um three balls and the coach comes in and your son swings and strikes out then uh, you're going to mark um struck out on the swing and then your son's out. Right. But separately, you marked that the coach pitch in the law. And, oh, you're talking about the pitching law? Yeah. No, that will only be your kids' pitches, only whatever the actual child pitched, not the coach pitches. Gotcha. So that last pitch that the coach pitches, you recorded in Game Changer, but not in the law. Correct. Because you have to, you have to record what happened with that coach pitch. Did he strike out? Did he get a hit? What happened? Right. Okay. 
I hope I hope that makes a little bit more sense. It does. I think some um, real time action. The more make practice it you better. get at it, it'll get easier. I promise it will. Thanks. Uh huh. It does. Thank you, Letty, and thank you, Alex, for for helping out there, fellow board. Yeah, no problem. I, and and I haven't seen it worked out in a book yet. I just know like the rules of how the coach comes in and 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 pitches and what it looks like with balls and strikes. So it's kind of interesting to hear this because. As a manager, I need to know this too. So I'm learning as same as you guys. Thank you. No, no appreciate it. All right. So um, that was it for uh, Game Changer there. We don't need to, to share anymore. And thank you, Leslie, for, for bringing in a pinch hitter there. See, the coach had to come in off the bench and help me. I appreciate that. Um, any other Game Changer questions before we um, move on to the paper book and, and we go over the pitch log here again? So I'm going to jump around to the pitch log really quickly because that is important for um, all of our pitching divisions. And are you guys seeing the, um, you're seeing the pitch count in that? Yep. Okay. Um, so as I said, everybody has to maintain their pitching logs. I know um, I saw Letty had that form there and I had showed you guys earlier what it is. Um, those you can the home scorekeeper can get out of the game changer, you know, at the, in the paper scorebook that we'll go over in a little bit, there are these little dots that you can fill out on the side here. Um, some people just check them with an X, some people circle them all in. That's a, a personal style preference that um, you as the paper scorekeeper can um, determine what you want to do. But your manager and, and you're a part of that has to document everything that they're doing on that day. Okay. The big thing with the logbook and the pitchers is threshold. And so you see these days of rest here that are mandatory that Little League requires. Um, these are full days of rest. And in some of the big pitching divisions, I'll, I'll keep picking on majors because we're one of them. We play Wednesdays and Fridays. So if a coach wants a player to pitch both Wednesday and Friday, they need to make sure that they are under 35 pitches because that player has to have one full day of rest. It isn't, I ended the game at 8 p.m. on Wednesday, and if I get to 8 p.m. on Friday, that's two days. It doesn't work that way. It's, it's a full calendar day of rest. And so they would have to keep them under 35 pitches. And so what you will see in those instances is that a manager will um, pull the pitcher, and they'll come to you, and they'll say, I'm subbing you know, number 10 in for number 11, and I thresholded 11 at 35. You need to document that in the scorebook, just like this. So you'll see it's, he actually threw 38 pitches to that batter, but the threshold here was 35. And so that's how you would document it in the pitch book. You just put a slash there, you put what the threshold was below it, and then their actual pitch count up above on that. And in this instance, it was 38. And that goes back to when we were talking earlier in terms of um, when you talk to the blue and alert him, hey, he's, he's reached his pitch limit. If he's in the middle of a batter, he gets to finish that batter. The player gets to finish that batter, um, but they have to come out after that. And so you'll see managers do this from time to time, um, especially in divisions where they're wanting them to pitch multiple times in a week. Um, but make sure that you document it like this. And if your manager signs it and they did not document the threshold or didn't see that you properly document the threshold, they did not threshold that player, even if they had said anything. It is locked in and you cannot change it once it's there. Even if they they could argue till they're blue in the face, that's it's not gonna help. It is, once they've signed it, they've signed it, it's there. And this is the, um, this is basically just a little snapshot of the, the scorebook that I was putting up in front of you guys there. And so you'll see it has the day of the game, pitches thrown, player's name, usually put in the full player's name, um, their uniform number, what league age they are. You might not know that, but your manager should share that information with you. I know for our scorekeepers in my scorebook, I have a, a sheet that basically lists all of our players by their their league age, as well as um, their numbers and their name. So that way our scorekeeper can look up that information very easily. 
And then you have to get your manager signature, the opposing manager signature, umpire. Hopefully they haven't taken off like Jason was alluding to. And then the date that they're eligible to pitch on again. So you've got to kind of know the days of rest here. And if you say it's, it's 35 pitches, he has to have one day of rest. So he can pitch again on the 8th. And this was under, yeah, the one day of rest. So he could pitch on the 8th. Okay. So that's critical to keep through. Um, and again, I would, if, if you're going to be doing a lot of scorekeeping, setting up a book like that is really helpful as you continue to go through. Um, for our scorekeepers, I normally share this around um, the room. I also include the rules, the pitching rules as we go through there, and hopefully the camera will actually focus. Yep. And so I actually keep the, a copy of the rules in there for our players, um, as well as, um, I actually even put in a calendar there for them so that um, if there's any question about what the day is or when they're eligible to pitch, they can just you know count over and then they can document that properly in the logbook, okay? And then we also keep in the, the, um, the scorekeeper rules. So if there's any questions about any of that, we can do it. Excuse me, I, I had a question about the pitch count because it said- Sure. Um, it needed one day of rest, and if that was March 7th, wouldn't the 8th be the rest, and then they could pitch the 9th, or? Yep, because they didn't threshold him. Good catch on that error. Yep. Okay. So that should be in the 9th. And that mean 9th and 10th, that's two days. Nope, because it was under the threshold there, so that's one day. Yep. So it should be the, the 9th that he's eligible okay. to pitch again. Great catch. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. I have to update my graphic. <laughs> any other questions on pitch log or any of that? Nope. Okay. Last thing that we'll go over, and I'm I'm trying to get everybody out of here as quick as we can. And normally I have giveaways, but I don't have any giveaway. I can't do any virtual giveaways, so I'm I'm sorry about that. We did T-shirts last year, and I I maybe next year we'll be able to do all of that. Um, so in the snack bar, we have the large silver bin. Um, for those of you that are new, it's it's it'll get it gets rolled out every game right before. And inside of that is a scorebook like this. And it's a pretty large scorebook. And it will be specific for the field that you are on. And you need to make sure you grab the one that is specific for the field that you are on. So you see this one says F2 on it, not F4 got crossed off. The reason being is that when there is any, say there is any protest, and, and I hope we don't have any this year, but if there are any protests, um, they go back to the scorebook and they also go back to Game Changer and they look to see what actually occurred in the game. They use these as the official record of what has happened. Um, and it's really difficult if you have a, a question to go back and there's probably eight or nine of these uh, towards the end of a season, you can get pretty upwards there in terms of the number of scorebooks that are used. And it is tough to go through and find a particular game if you have to look through all of those books and it's not just that game was on field two, let me go look at the field two books. Um, and sometimes it'll happen where it gets flipped, but it does happen there. So when you um, pick up the log book or pick up the, um, the paper book on the side here, on the other side, you put in the names of, let me stop sharing screen so you guys can get a better image of that. There we go. So on this side here, you put in the name of the player. So you put in their number, their name. You can put in the position if you want to. It isn't um, required, especially some of the lower divisions, it will actually rotate. Um, you know, you'll have a kid that's in a catcher and then they're in a pitcher next inning. Um, so that can vary vary a lot and same thing with the upper divisions this is actually a majors game and um you know you could have a player come in as a sub that goes over to third base so that can vary and then as you go through and you start scoring the game and i'll show it to you here on the sheet it's probably a little easier you just document the plays as they happen yes. try and do this all reversed <laughs> so in this instance, you can see that there was a single that Dustin got on base. And then you can see right above that, it says SB, SB. So there were two stolen bases. So 
So as they go around that little diamond that's there, you document their path. You just put a, a line across and then document it as a stolen base. Um, if they were thrown out, you would document that as an out as they get to um, that position on the field there, okay? And you can, as you're going through, you can keep track of it being either, you know, obviously a K is a strikeout. Um, anybody know backwards K? That's just my nerdy Strikeout looking. There you go. All right. See, Jamie would have won a t-shirt if she was, if we were in person, that was, that was there, but that is a strikeout looking. And so you see, this was a, a swinging strikeout right here by Noah. And then we had a strikeout looking by Joaquin. And what you'll see a lot of our scorekeepers do, and we recommend this just so you don't get confused, is you see the squiggly line that goes all the way down to the end of the lineup. That's just so that you know, you don't accidentally start the next inning in that, that uh, space over there. It just helps you keep track of it as you go through. Now, as this was a majors game, you'll see that there were some subs in this game. And you can see that, uh, you know, Finley had a sub here. So when you, a substitute comes in, they'll tell you I'm bringing in, you know, Preston for Finley. And in that instance, you need to put Preston below, just like it was documented here. And then you're documenting Preston's, um, you know, work as he goes through the game there. Some scorekeepers, and I will flip this over here in a second, I'll show you, they'll actually document what inning that substitution occurred. Um, so that way, if there's ever a question, if the blue comes to you and asks, did, you know, did Joaquin meet minimum play, you can then tell them, well, he came in in the third inning. They may ask you some of those questions. So it, if that ever happens, you get asked. Sorry about that. So you'll see here, this scorekeeper actually wrote what inning those substitutes came in. And you see that, that that player came in the fifth inning. So he, we better hope that game went to six innings. So that way they were able to keep track of all of that. I, personal preference here, I, I prefer the iPad. I think it's, it's a lot easier to score a game on than um, that. But a lot of people like the paper version because you can just erase any mistake that you make. You don't have to worry about the undo, undo, undo. And um, that can get tedious at, at, at times. Um, so the visitor team, you're always the one that has the scorebook, that has a paper book there. The managers from both teams need to give you uh, lineups. And hopefully your manager's being helpful in giving you that lineup right away. Um, but if not, don't feel, don't, don't be bothered to bug them during warmups. Ask them, hey, I need a lineup, Blue. I need a lineup manager. And um, get that so that way you can um, make sure that you're prepared and ready to go when the Blue says, you know, when he puts the ball into play. Um, paper book, lots of abbreviations here. Um, some of them you've probably seen before if, you, if you've ever looked at baseball. Um, but that's why kind of why I keep all of this in my scorebook for my scorekeepers. So that way, if they know, you know, pass ball or stolen base, they can use those um, shortcuts or abbreviations as they go through with all of that. Um, fielding positions here, you know, if you see a, a 4 3 out, you know, obviously that was hit to the second baseman and he threw it over to third for the out rather than running it over himself. Um, so some good scoring examples here. Um, you see single being documented just that, a double you draw that line over and then um, get a, a really good examples in terms of how to use the paper book in that. Um, there isn't too much you know, to, to speak about with the paper book, it, it is what it is, um, but it's important that you document those plays. So as you and the, if there's ever a dispute between you and the game changer scorekeeper in terms of what happened, you can go back. The big thing that we usually see happen is if there are any internet issues, um, I'm sure all of us being at home these last year, we've never experienced any of that. Um, but if you ever do get an internet issue, um, sometimes Game Changer will have an issue syncing up. And so they'll, the other scorekeeper will ask your help in terms of catching up with, with what uh, occurred on the play there. Um, so you could be the, the really critical piece in that. There will be occasions, just to, to jump back to that, I was just thinking of that, um, where you'll see Game Changer will tell you it's lost um, internet connection, but it's still letting you score the game. Continue to score the game because um, it will catch up and it will upload to Game Changer once you have caught, once once it's got back up and it's got internet access. So keep 
keep working with Game Changer, the app will work. It'll just sync with the actual website once you've gotten it done or once it's got internet access there. Okay. And I, I, we covered, you know, going over to the bases and a solid line there. We did our pitch logs. And the only other thing that's available on the website is, let me share this actual piece here. There's another, um, there's another document on the OCLL website. And this is, um, if you ever really wanted to know anything and everything about scorekeeping and every abbreviation and, and everything that was there, this is the definitive guide on that, at least for, for Little League Baseball. It goes through and gives you fielding positions and everything that you could possibly need to, to know about those particular divisions and goes through and gives you some of the same examples that we've done, but it does go into a lot more depth in terms of um, different areas and things like that. So it is available on the website, OCLL.com um, under volunteer resources, it's there. And um, it even has some game changer updates as well. So that was it in terms of the scorekeeping and, and keeping up to date with any of that. Um, I wanna thank you guys again, it, it, as I said, you're a critical piece to our league. Um, you know, you, without you, those games don't happen. And, um, you know, our players like to know who won that game. And without you, they're, they're not going to know that. They'll be like, wait, I thought we had five runs. I thought we had six. We had a scrimmage game on Monday with my players and they thought they had 10 runs and they only had eight. And so we want to make sure that we're properly documenting all of that for them. Thank you again. If there are any questions, um, definitely, you know, feel free to ask them right now. Yeah, I've got another one. Um, between the game changer on the iPad and the log for, you know, the full recording of the game um, on paper, you can choose which one you want to go, right? The home team gets the iPad and uh -huh. the visiting team gets the paper. Oh, so the visiting team is getting, okay. I, I, did, I missed that. Yep. Right. And so sometimes what I'll see happen is um, somebody's more more comfortable doing the iPad than they are the paper book. Usually, if you go to the other managers, they're pretty amicable about, yeah, no problem. You know, I'll, I'll switch depending on what it is. Or the other person may not know Game Changer. They may only know how to do the book. Um, I had one scorekeeper that she would not touch um, the iPad at all, and she's but she always did the paper book for us. So. Hey, Steven, Alex says that he wanted to explain something. He just talked to Brett about okay. pitch counting. You want to go on? Oh, for the single A divisions? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I want to jump on right now. <laughs> Sorry. Any other questions? Well, Ali, well, he's still talking to, uh, to Brett there. But I'm glad we're getting the clarification for you guys. That's what we needed. Yes, one question, Stephen, on, um, I know for the paper book, we get the lineup and the scorekeepers put the names in on the game changer. Should the names already be in the game changer or is that part of what we do as well? Most of the managers will already have pre-populated that. They'll already put in the lineup and they'll, they'll have it all, you know, penciled in. I would double check with what the sheet is that they provide you. And if there are any conflicts, ask them, say, you, you have Brecken at number three, but he's actually at number four in Game Changer. How, how do we, where is he in your lineup? And make sure that that gets set because you, you want to make sure that you're properly documenting what players where as you go through. All right, Alex, I thought you had additional info for us. Yeah, so I, I talked with Brett and we kind of discussed how to handle the single A like pitch count in Game Changer. Uh, and, and so I was, we discussed like where the visitor um, scorekeeper is going to be the official scorebook. Um, and, and they need to keep track, the visitor's um, scorekeeper needs to keep track of the pitch count. And that's going to be the official pitch count for, for single A. And then with game changer, like if it's four pitches and they walk and the pitcher come, well, they don't walk, but the coach comes out and starts pitching. Then you just keep adding the, the strikes if they get strikes or if they strike out to game changer. 
and that's going to change the pitch count. But what's official is the the pitch count that the visitor scorekeeper will, will be will be keeping tally of, and that's what the manager and umpire signs at the end of the game. And so, like Brett was saying, like some scorekeepers they'll go off of the pitch count on game changer to see if it matches up with what the book is is doing. But I think in single A, because we have this rule in the beginning, um, half the season that, you know, that that pitch count that the visitor or scorekeeper is doing, that's going to be the official official mark, the official document. Well, thank you for the clarification. I know we'll probably have more questions about that as the season goes on and as um and as that rule, you know, as we phase that out and players start to develop there, and we hope we get a lot of good development in our single A division there. Yeah, and, and it sounds like uh, Brett will send out an email to the single A managers and um, coaches and maybe even team moms about that that rule for, for single A with, with the pitch count. Sounds like a good idea. Thank you, sir. No problem. Uh, Jason, did you have a question there? All right. Well, everybody, I thank you for coming on this evening. I appreciate your time. Um, it's been a long week, and we are excited that after over a year break, I think we're we're 13 months of break, um, we get back on the field with our majors division tomorrow. And Saturday, everybody's playing, and it's a good day for the league, and I'm really excited about it. It's going to be a good day, good weekend for all of us. So. Let's look forward to that and go out and uh, cheer on our, our players and support them as we continue with the league. If you think of a question, um, you know, two weeks from now or run into something, please feel free to email me. Uh, my email's on the, the website there. I'm glad to help you and, and hopefully answer your question. Or if not, uh, you know, I'll bring Alex in as a pinch hitter or Leslie and then we'll, we'll, we'll help out and hopefully find the, the proper answer for you. All right. Thank you, families. You have a good evening and uh, enjoy your dinners as we go through. All right. Thank you.